All right, folks, so here we go with question two on the review. Um, so this says in the diagram, this is just so we can clear up what this all means. It says in the diagram below, um, BE is parallel to DC. Okay, so that's what these little arrows mean is that these two lines are parallel. The only reason that they put that in there is that we know if those lines are parallel, then it makes two similar triangles. We don't have to prove that the triangles are similar in order to use our similar angles, okay? So I know it's confusing to put that in there, but let's just, and then they just give us the links, but like that's already on the diagram, like 10 is there. So don't worry about all that other stuff, but we do know what we're looking for is we're looking for the length of AC. Uh, right now, I am gonna call AC X. It's gonna make it easier in my diagram, okay? So from now on, when I write X, what I'm really saying is AC. Now. I think that when I have two triangles that overlap each other, it makes it hard for me to visualize. So I really like to distinguish my two triangles. Now, I understand that you guys don't have a fancy computer thing in front of you, and you can't just draw on it and move it. It's okay. Just draw two triangles, guys. I'm doing it so that you can visualize where they're coming from. I have a big triangle and a little triangle. If you don't have to make it perfect, just, just draw them. So I know that that side is 10. That comes from there. I know that this side is 5. That comes from here. I know this bottom side is 50. That comes from here. And by the way, this is A, B, B, and this is A, C, D. Now I'm looking for AC. That's A, A, C. So this side over here, I'm going to label that as X because I don't know how long that side is. What I need to do from here is set up a proportion with the stuff that I know. And it never hurts, by the way, guys, to go ahead and just identify your corresponding sides. I know that this color coding works for some people. Okay, so I can make fractions based on my color coding. Now, I'm going to start with X. I'm going to put X in the top of my fraction. And the thing that matches with X, because X is yellow, is 10. So I've got the yellow side from the right over the yellow side from the left. Now, for my other fraction, I'm going to start on the right side again. Now, I'm going to do my blue, the blue one from my right. That's 50. And over here on the left, I've got 5. So notice how 50 matches up with 5. They're both on the bottom. X matches up with 10. They're both on the left side. Okay? Now I just need to solve this equation. You guys have solved this in algebra. I know that you have. I'm going to give this all back. All right. Oh, man, my, guys, my zero didn't go. That's embarrassing, huh? Experiment. There we go. All right. So um, to solve this, I'm just trying to get X by itself. Now, X is not currently by itself. I have this pesky 10. Since, I, since currently I am dividing the 10, I need to do the opposite to get rid of it. So the opposite is to just multiply by 10. Whatever I do on one side, I also have to do on the other. That's basic algebra. Now, since I've got a 10 on top and I've got a 10 on bottom, that means that they cancel each other out and I'm left with just X, which is exactly what I wanted. I want just X. And if I look over here, uh, 50 times 10 makes 500 divided by 5. 500 divided by 5 is just 100. So now I know that this side is 100. Now, what I want you to notice is that now I also have a pretty easy scale factor that I could see, right? Because 10, if I multiply by 10, I get 100. 5, if I multiply by 10, I get 50. So I have a scale factor of 10 between the small triangle and the big triangle. That's pretty easy to see here but I want you to be able to see this process for how to do it, 
Okay, I have questions on that. This is one of the harder ones that you guys have been dealing with. I know it's hard. Please, please, please ask questions if you have. 